can you travel to work and back and run your errands solely with the battery from your plug-in hybrid without tapping into the ICE or the internal combustion engine? Now that's a question I seek to answer this week with the Volvo S60 T8 plug-in hybrid. Now the distance between uh, my house to the office is about 15 kilometers, which means I should be able to go home and back solely on the uh, the Volvo S60's battery. It's got a range of about 50 kilometers, 11.6 kilowatt uh, hour battery size. But let's find out if I do get that range. So it's 9.37pm uh, that you can see on the clock, 9.38 now, it says the car will be fully charged at 10.30pm, it's about 40% charge, uh, I'm about to head to sleep for tonight so I suppose we wake up tomorrow morning and see uh, if it's fully charged. Uh, just one thing to note is that my house has uh, one phase or single phase wiring. Uh, we are running the aircon in my son's room at the moment as well as uh, my master bedroom. How will that affect the charging of the car? Will that slow it down? We don't know but we'll find out. So the 40 that you see there basically is the mileage or the kilometers that I can drive purely on battery and not the percentage so it is uh, fully charged and we are going to hit the road now drive to the office let's see if i can drive and get back running on pure battery i'm going to put the car in pure eco drive mode which means it will be only using the batteries i'm also going to make sure that the aircon is kept at 22 degrees two levels on the fan and that's it so those are the limiting factors that i'm putting on the car there'll be no radio no music uh, throughout the car so as you saw just now uh, on the phone, uh, the journey from my house to the office is about 12 kilometers, which means we should be able to go there and back safely without even using the ICE, without turning on the engine at all. So let's get moving before my neighbor knocks me. So I'm going to drive like how I normally drive to be fair, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to baby it, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go slow to make sure I'm not utilizing too much of the battery. I'm generally quite an, uh, I guess the best term would be is that I'm an aggressive driver, so we will keep it that way. So the S60 uh, T8 plug-in hybrid has 11.6 kilowatt battery on it, which uh, in real world conditions, or I mean in lab testing, uh, has a range of about 50 kilometers. Uh, as you can see, I have 45 listed on the uh, on the speedo, which you would have seen earlier. Now, how there's of course a lot of factors go into the battery utilization: the road conditions, the air condition, the screen being turned on. All these things factor in. So let's see what kind of uh, economy we get uh, driving the way I drive uh, with uh, purely on battery. Another thing to note is that due to the fact that it is, of course, uh, the MCO, there are probably a few lesser cars on the road which should make the journey to the office or to my office a bit more uh, clear and free. But these are some of the things that I just wanted to be aware of as we go throughout this, uh, this whole experience. Okay, so now I'm parked at my uh, in the office uh, area where I normally park on a regular basis. The battery currently sits at 32 uh, kilometers of range. Now, so we used about 11.4 kilometers to get here, which means I should safely be able to go back home without using the engine whatsoever, solely on the battery. So we'll give that a go and we'll see what happens on the way back. Okay, of course, for those of you who are able to charge your car while you're in the office, then you can always uh, use a fast charger if you have it available or even a wall charger if you have it available uh, in the office and, and charge up your car. Just remember, once you're done charging, don't hog the, the charging spot. Give it up, move your car for someone else, okay? 
uh, where I parked just now in Mid Valley, uh, I don't have uh, a charger there or a wall box charger there, so I can't charge it up. But looking at the range that I'm getting, I don't even have to be concerned if all I am going to do is basically drive to the office and drive back home. I don't think I need to be concerned with charging it in the office. So I'm back home. The battery has got 16 kilometers of range left. We've traveled a total of 25 kilometers. So 25 plus 16 is about 41, which was what we what what we saw earlier. Then factor in the aircon, of course. You know, I mean, this basically tells me that I can travel to work and back from work without even using fuel. And I also, and I even have a 16 kilometer range left. And I've not tempered my driving in any way. I've driven how I would normally drive any of my other cars. So I'm proper impressed. So that brings us to the end of, of day one of this experiment. Uh, we'll continue on throughout the, the next five days uh, of me driving into the office. We'll talk about uh, some of the more uh, some of the features of this Volvo S60, who its competition is, what uh, the price, what what's the price of this S60, and a few other uh, things to consider if you are looking to get a plug-in hybrid. So I will catch you tomorrow. Signing off for today. All right. So day two with the Volvo S60. Uh, last night I charged it in again. You would have seen the similar to, to yesterday. Plugged it out this morning, fully charged. Uh, I did run some errands yesterday evening as well. Again, running fully on the battery. So at the end of these five days, we should be able to see how much I've run just on the batteries without using the engine, which should be impressive. Right, so we're on the way day two to the office. Uh, once again, the car is running on pure EV. And I think uh, a question that lingers on many minds uh, is that now, if you were in the 300,000 uh, ringgit uh, bracket, you're looking for a plug-in hybrid, uh, what are your options in Malaysia? Uh, good for you, or maybe bad, depending on how you look at it, is that you only have two options. You either have the Volvo S60 T8, the one we're currently in, plug-in hybrid, or you have the BMW 330e. So those are the only two options you have. Now we'll explore that as we uh, continue on our drive to the office. So the 330e M Sport uh, comes, let's talk about some figures. Just before we go on though, uh, similar to yesterday, uh, I've got the aircon on at 22 degrees Celsius, the fan is blowing uh, on two. Uh, like I said, these are limiting factors we are setting uh, to remove as many variables as can with regard to the journey to the office. Now back to the competition. So the competition for this S60 would be the 330EM Sport. Now it has about uh, 290 horsepower with 420 Newton meters of torque. Now the 290 horsepower is with the extra boost feature kicked in and in comparison the S60 has 407 horsepower with 600 newton meters of torque so there is a fair bit of uh, of difference in in performance or in numbers at least with regard to the 330e m sport and the s60 Right, the 330e uh, BMW uh, has a 0 to 100 of uh, 5.9 seconds, whereas the Volvo, this Volvo has a 0 to 100 of 4.4 uh, seconds. Now, the Volvo S60 is not, it has never been been marketed as a sports sedan or or anything along those lines. It's, it has been marketed as a plug-in hybrid, uh, a sedan for the family. That also gives you gives you the dad or even the mum bucket loads of fun when 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 you want it right but we took it one step further so if you haven't watched the video that we did last year during Merdeka of the Volvo S60 drag racing turbo cars souped up cars I'm gonna put that in the in the comments make sure you watch that So I'm parked here in the office, we've reached uh, the same spot we were yesterday I believe. Uh, I've got 33 kilometers of range left uh, on pure battery. 
and we're gonna do the journey back home and see what we end up with. Now back to the competition for the S60. It's always nice to have some. Now the BMW 330e M Sport has uh, a 12 kilowatt battery on it with a claimed mileage of uh, or claimed distance of 56 kilometers. Whereas on this, it has 11.6 kilowatt battery with a 50 kilometer range. Uh, as I think you've seen and I've mentioned, uh, we only get a max of 45 that shows up. That of course is dependent on so many things uh, with regard to air conditioning, the screen being on, uh, road conditions, tyre pressure. There's just a lot of variables that uh, come in play with regard to uh, battery range on these cars. But for the purposes of this particular experiment, I've not had any issues going home uh, going to the office and back running purely on the battery as you would have seen already yesterday uh, How the what's the actual range on the 330e M Sport? Unfortunately, we've not yet had our got our hands on the on the 330e I mean, it's been a it's been a year that's been a bit difficult to get uh, To get cars for review and also long-term reviews especially but BMW Malaysia if you're watching this uh, give us a 330e M Sport for a week and uh, we'll be able to, you know, uh, do a side-by-side -side comparison. Now, of course, the most important question, the $300 question or thereabouts is what does the S60? So the S60 cost about $282,000 uh, with a five-year or 100,000 kilometer warranty on the car, but an eight-year and 160,000 kilometer warranty on the batteries in this plug-in hybrid so that's the price of the s60 with the sst exemptions that we currently have now the bmw on the other hand is slightly cheaper and it's made been made even more cheaper now with their no with their new two-year unlimited uh warranty that they have so if you opt for the two-year unlimited warranty the car goes at 252,000 for the 330 em spot but if you go for the, or if you stick with the five-year unlimited warranty, it is priced at about I think it's two hundred and sixty-five thousand uh, with the five-year unlimited warranty. So that's the price difference between the the three thirty E M Sport and the S sixty. You're looking at about so if you take the three thirty E M Sport with two hundred and sixty-five thousand versus the S sixty with two hundred and eighty-three thousand looking at about an 18,000 difference in price now when you're shopping in the 300 kilometer bracket a eh, 300 kilometer pula when you're shopping in the 300k bracket is 18,000 make or break what do you think tell us in the comments uh, if you were in the market for a plug-in hybrid and you had the option between the Volvo S60 and the 330e M Sport which would you go for and why let us know in the comments. It'd be interesting to find out what your thoughts are and why you chose that, uh, that particular model. So I've got 20 kilometers of range left. Uh, we're back home uh, from uh, the office. And like I said, I've not tempered my driving in any way whatsoever to, to, to give a better range uh, for the batteries. I've driven as I normally drive. Uh, I'll set it up to charge again tonight before I go to bed and uh, on day two I'm I'm proper impressed uh, with the battery uh, and we'll see what day three brings so for today's experiment we are actually on the way to Klang to get some apple strudel apparently the best ones in the Klang Valley come from Klang so we are on the way there and we're gonna travel to Klang on only the batteries so if you had seen uh, or if you see we've got 31 kilometers of range on the battery left the distance from here to the bakery that we're heading to is 23 kilometers uh, our current mileage is uh, 11750 in total on this trip uh, which i have not uh, reset since uh, or which we've set since the beginning of this whole experiment we are sitting at 147.7 kilometers now taking all of this into consideration right what we want to find out is at the end of our journey it should read 
that I've got 3 kilometers of range left. Will it be more? Will it be less? We'll find out at the end of the journey. Now, in order to remove the variable of uh, human error with regard to excessive braking acceleration, I have turned on the uh, Adaptive Cruise Control, the ACC, uh, with pilot assist. I've set the ACC at 90 km an hour, uh, which should, should be the, the average uh, travelling speed uh, on the Federal Highway. Worth bearing in mind that uh, it is quiet, uh, traffic is quite heavy on the Federal Highway today as you can see. So what we are doing today uh, actually is a concept uh, in the EV world that is known as, as hypermiling. Of course it also applies to, to PHEVs and one of uh, and the definition of that basically is to get the best range possible with uh, from the batteries in your car, right? Uh, now, with regard to hypermiling, one of the biggest uh, factors that affect, uh, of course, efficiency of uh, an EV or even uh, a PHEV is your coefficient drag. Coefficient drag basically uh, means that uh, how or it's basically a, a barometer of how efficient your your car moves. Uh, on the road with regard to creating drag. Now the higher drag you have, of course it means that uh, you're, you're using more fuel and you're not as efficient as, as you can be. So the closer you are to uh, zero, uh, means you have a better coefficient drag. Now for the Volvo S60, it's got a coefficient drag of 0 0.28. Now compare that against say a Myvi, which has a coefficient drag of 0 0.296, which is really not bad. For a MyV, right? It's, it is quite efficient. Uh, this is the 2018 MyV, and as we all know, they are also energy efficient vehicles. Now, uh, on the more extreme side of things, now the Mercedes A Class sedan has a coefficient drag of 0 0.22, which I believe uh, is the lowest, if not one of the lowest currently in the Mercedes table, right? So, again, the closer you are to zero the more efficient your car moves against uh the the wind that is coming from uh, from the front right now of course that factors into the battery life of uh, an ev or a phev and that's why a lot of these cars are very aerodynamic in design in order to further prolong in order to further to give you more range and this is what we're trying to test today with uh, the volvo s60 now is the range that we started with minus the distance we covered will be the balance that is left now that's the question we're trying to answer obviously we've, we've tried to remove as many variables uh, as possible like i said we're using the acc i've set it at 90 kilometers uh, the aircon is set at 22 degrees with uh, the blower or the fan again turned up to the second level these are some of the safeguards we've put in place and we'll see at the end of our journey uh, what balance uh, we have left with the battery. Okay, so we've arrived at the bakery in Klang to get the apple strudel. Now, if you remember at the start of this journey, we had started with 11750, as you would have seen. We'll flash it up again on screen. Uh, we've ended the journey with 11772 which means we've traveled an approximately uh, 22 kilometers. You would have also seen at the start of this experiment that we had a range of 31 kilometers on uh, the batteries. And now, at the end of it, we are sitting at 15 kilometers of range, which means we have used far less than what, was, than what I in initially projected. Now, if we had followed 31 minus 22 should give you a balance of 9 kilometers of battery range left we are sitting at 15 which means that optimum driving which the car helped achieve with the acc and the pilot assist helped us achieve a result that was better than intended so experiment i think we can call it a success because we ended up with a lot more than we thought we were going to be left with. And what do you think about that? Now, is that something that would convince you or is further conviction of the fact that maybe it's time we all get a plug-in hybrid or maybe even an EV? 
let us know in the comments we'd love to hear what your thoughts are uh, throughout this whole video in fact and if there's anything that that, that we can answer uh, just pop them into the comments and i'll try to get to them so day four now if you uh, didn't already know uh volvo as part of its uh, one million more campaign and part of a larger objective to keep uh, us safe in in volvo cars or all uh, drivers safe in volvo cars they have committed to having uh, no more accident related deaths uh, in a volvo vehicle now as part of that uh, initiative uh, they've kept all their cars at 180 kilometers per hour Right, so even this one that I'm in, uh, it's kept. You can only hit 180 kilometers per hour, which personally to me uh, is it's a good thing. I mean, how often can we even hit 180 driving in Malaysia, regardless of whether or not we're on the highways or on the by roads or in the in the town? And even if we can hit that 180, how many of you are confident that you can handle the car at that speed? right so these are questions to 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 ponder i think and and i think it's also part of a, of, of a bigger picture uh, i'd like to ask you this question so when you buy a car are you buying the car solely just for the car because you love the car its performance at the right at the, it's at the right price point or also or are you also buying a car because of the brand because of how much the brand means and the values that they stand for is that something that you consider at all let us know in the comments because uh, I, I don't think this, this has ever been asked uh, before, at least I've not seen it being asked. Like, would the values that Volvo stand for be a contributing factor to you to buy a Volvo? Is that something that you would consider at all? Or is it something that, nah, it doesn't matter, I, I don't care. So I think pocket, cukup duit beli. So what is it for you? Let us know in the comments. Because it'd be interesting to find out what your thought process is with regard to purchasing uh, a, a new car. So on the first day, you would have seen me uh, charging the, on the first night basically, charging the S60 up to the 3-pin uh, plug in my home, but we didn't actually check how long it took to charge, right? Because I plugged it in, I went to sleep. So we are going to address that question today. Uh, how long does it take to charge using a 3-pin plug? 230 uh, volts, a regular electric supply from our homes. As you'll also see, the charging time dropped, uh, dropped significantly uh, when we plugged it in. So the last would have been probably, I think, 6.30 p.m. So we're starting at about 2.06 p.m. That's about four and a half hours to a full charge. Uh, typically, uh, what the manual say is that it takes about maybe five hours to get to a full charge from uh, a three-pin socket. And if you're using a 3.7 kilowatt uh, wall box, it should be uh, three hours. We can't confirm the 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 wall box uh, timing but with regard to the three pin plug from your home we are seeing slightly under uh, five hours of course i'm going to check it throughout the day to make sure that you know uh, when do we actually end up fully charging it right so it's 6 31 pm we have a full charge it's as most uh, it's the most we've gotten uh with range that's 45 it's fully charged so you would have seen the start and this is uh, the end uh berapa jam we you can calculate yourself lah. a big a big big a part of why we're doing this is or for me personally is to also answer the question are phevs plug-in hybrids and by extension uh full electric vehicles full evs the solution to uh, mobility and to be fair in the past in the past few days that i've used the s60 run it purely uh, on the battery i've been thoroughly impressed with what it can deliver i've not had uh, any issues with with range anxiety which i think is normal because i'm not driving a full ev right i mean it is a phev so i know there's always that backup uh engine that 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 that, that comes in to support in case i run out of battery right but i think even if i was driving a full ev if we were planning our journeys throughout the day there'd be no issues for us to safely run on p 
pure battery or on, on pure EV. You know, it requires some planning, yes, but it's nothing that is out of the the, 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 the ordinary or out of, out of, out of the realm of, of what we can do. Because I have, over these past few days, done it. And the more you do it, I think the more second nature it becomes. And the more easier it then becomes for you to start planning things out, right? Now, of course, a big question uh, with regard to uh, EVs or PHEVs uh, are, of course, uh, emissions, right? So what kind of emissions do uh, these cars produce? And is it lower compared to your regular uh, road-going cars that are running combustion engines? And you'd be surprised to find that it is quite a fair big difference. Now, the Volvo S60 combined, right, has 46 grams per kilometer of CO2 emissions. Now you compare that against a BMW 530i M Sport, which has now 132 grams per kilometer of CO2 emissions. This is the G20 variant, right, the current one. So that is a big, big difference there. It's almost a difference of, of 100 gram per kilometer. Research has shown that more than a third of the lifetime CO2 emissions from an electric car comes from the energy used to make the car itself, right? So now having said that, now once the car then leaves the factory, you should see a reducing effect of emissions. And also let's bear in mind that the more the processes to make cars to produce these batteries gets more efficient, gets more streamlined, gets more productive, then you're going to find emissions dropping even lower. Now, all these things point to me or paint a picture of the death knell of the internal combustion engine, right? I think you're going to find less and less of that being produced. You're going to find probably more plug-in hybrids, more EVs, which we're already seeing now, to be honest. I mean, you've got, you've got companies that are pledging to have their old... I think Audi has this pledge to have an all EV lineup by 2035. You've got countries that are moving towards phasing out diesel and petrol engines. The UK, uh, India, so many, so many countries now have jumped on board with the plan. Unfortunately, here in Malaysia, we don't have any as yet, but I hope that's coming. Uh, and if you were to ask me today, if I would swap any of the, the three, or all three of my uh, internal combustion engines, my ICE engines, with the Volvo S60 that I have uh, behind me, my answer to the disbelief of, or maybe even chagrin of Mini, would probably be yes. Not probably yes, it would be yes, really. I mean, I've spent a fair amount of time with the X60 and, uh, I mean, I ruled the day I have to return it. I am saddened by the fact that I cannot afford it as of yet. But yes, I would, I would trade it in for the for the for the S60. Now it's got it's got the performance that I I want in a car. It's got that that it looks good. Uh, it is the best plug-in hybrid available in Malaysia, if you ask me at the moment. Even among the Volvo lineup, right? It drives brilliantly. It's comfortable. It seats for. It's got a proper boot. But yes, I would gladly trade my ICE cars for this plug-in hybrid, without a doubt. Today brings us to day five of this somewhat long-term review with the Volvo S60. And I think you've seen throughout these five days uh, what it's been like. For me, it's been a new experience uh, living with a, with a plug-in hybrid, living with this for, for as long as I have, you know. And I think that there are some, there are some, some key takeaways. It's not without its uh, getting used to. I think one of the things that I want to highlight with regard to, to the car itself is that for long-arm people like me, you're going to knock the, the center console a fair bit. And when you're driving, sometimes you're going to be stuck, uh, pinned in uh, your, your hand. But 
you got to understand why that is though because the, the battery is housed just under the center console so that gives it a bit less uh, or, or a bit more limitation with regard to the space that you can uh, that you have along the center console uh, and i think also uh, one thing that i had a bit more time getting or a bit more time to get used to was the fact that i had to charge the car every day so sometimes you forget if you don't do it immediately but i think these are just things that you can once you get into the rhythm of doing it then it's fine so those are some of the things that i found a bit difficult to come to grasp with but moving past that it does also help you plan your journeys better because you know if you if you do plan to use uh, the battery range for as long as possible for as far as possible you start planning things better and and that ultimately helps you know and i think if you then progress from a plug-in hybrid to an ev then it becomes second nature so you're, you're putting the building blocks now in place having spent this amount of time with the car you know it, it's i was already convinced that six cylinder big displacement naturally aspirated engines are on their way out as much as as it saddens me to say that to be fair i would take a two cylinder turbo supercharger plug-in hybrid any day over a six cylinder naturally aspirated engine i would if we go with that option where you've got a, a plug-in hybrid as as your weekly car and you've got a, a fun car uh whatever it may be as your weekend driver then the volvo s60 plug-in hybrid is a good place to start you know i mean it is it ticks off all the boxes of things that you need in a sedan in a family mover in fact that you're not going to be be wanting for anything else right of course uh in its class in its price range you also have uh, the g20 330e right now we've not spent any time or we've not spent time with that yet i look forward to to give you then uh, a, a comparison between this and uh, and the beamer and, and the bmw but yeah so if you're shopping in the 300,000 uh, range then and you're looking for a plug-in hybrid or you want to get an introduction into what battery tech is about what hybrids are then the volvo s60 is a good place to start now with regard to consumption of course the big question right now uh throughout the week that we fed i reset the auto and day one it's day five today we've traveled approximately 204 kilometers uh we've charge the battery up almost every night after uh, using it to a full charge wake up the next day we reuse it uh, you'll see the difference in fuel that we have now at the end of these five days versus when we started i've not refueled the car the fuel economy that i'm getting is uh, 2.8 liters per 100 kilometers uh, volvo's numbers i believe are two liters per 100 kilometers but that depends on many different factors obviously as you've also seen uh, i'm not gentle on the car i am quite an aggressive driver so all that translates into the consumption into the usage obviously but can you complain really can i complain uh no i cannot you know i mean if anything this week spent with the car has further convinced me that i may need to get myself a phev or i may need to get myself a plug-in hybrid oh dear <laughs>